This is the third of a series of four talks about the four houses in West Buckland School. A little while ago, I, I dealt with uh, the founder, Breton, first house named after him, second house was named after the Earl of Devon, Courtney, and this is to do with the third one, Fortescue. The school owes its existence to a coincidence, and it is all to do with bad lungs and bad eyesight. You will remember that the Reverend Breton, the school's founder, came to Devon because of his health. His lungs were weak. The bracing air would be good for them. In the course of his priestly duties, he met the man who would become Earl Fortescue on the death of his father in 1861. Let us for simplicity call him Fortescue. Fortescue had been heavily involved in politics when he was young but he contracted a severe infection of the eye, which led to the loss of sight in it. He gave up politics and retired to the family seat at Castle Hill in Philly. Breton and Fortescue, as I said, struck up a friendship which lasted the rest of their lives. Out of this friendship was born West Buckland School, the fruit of weak lungs and a diseased eye. Breton brought to the project the spark, the energy, the drive. Fortescue provided the connections, the clout, the class. He also provided the land. He rented 11 acres to the school with the option to buy it in five years' time for £466. £466. The school campus now covers about 100 acres. He did more than that. He provided the money for a school chaplaincy. He set up a Fortescue scholarship for poorer boys. He began the tradition of the Fortescue Medal. This was to be awarded to a boy for the greatest all-round merit. Only boys in the school then, remember. The tradition remains. The Fortescue Medal is still presented, <coughs> and by no means every year, to boys and now girls as well who by their efforts, both inside and outside the classroom, have brought distinction to themselves and to the school. It is the highest award in the school's gift. If any young pupils are watching this, just think, a few of you could step up one day to receive it. And when you do, you might remember this moment. In case you should think that the Fortescues are famous only because they're associated with West Buckner School, let me fill you in. Remember Courtney's, whose family went right back to the 11th century? Well, the Fortescues can claim the same. One of them fought beside William the Conqueror at the Battle of Hastings. And that was not all. Family tradition says that during the course of the battle, he saved William's life not once, but three times by placing himself between William and his enemies, by being, if you like, a, a sort of shield. Very brave of him. You'll see the point of this in a minute. The Latin word for shield is scutum, S-C-U-T-U-M, scutum. The Latin word for brave is forte. So a brave shield is a forte scutum, forte scutum, hence fortescue. Anyway, William was very grateful and gave the man some land, and the Fortescues have never looked back. When the school was nearly 50 years old, in 1907, a new headmaster was appointed. His name was Ernest Harries, Ernie to all the boys. He was a man of great gifts, and before long he was raising the numbers of pupils. The original two houses, Britton and Courtney, it was decided were not enough there would be a third house, what more obvious name than Fortescue. By the outbreak of the First World War, they were competing on level terms with the other two. But remember that everything was, was on a much smaller scale than it is now, say about 120 odd boys altogether. So if there were three houses, that makes about 40 for each one. Take two cricket teams, senior and junior, 22, so over half the boys played cricket 
for their house and football and so on. If the rugby, if rugby had been played then, three quarters of the entire school would have played rugby for their house. Take the Exmoor. There were three races, senior, under 15 and under 13. Take away the very smallest boys to act as markers. It meant that only about 10 boys from each house competed in their respective races. People say things about the, the family atmosphere in the school now. How much more that must have been true in say 1910 or 1911 when Fortescue House was invented and when they were nearly all boarders. How much more it must have hurt when 56 old boys were killed in the First World War out of a school roll of less than 130. Well, Fortescue. The family of Fortescue have continued to take an interest in the fortunes of the school. They have come to the rescue several times when the school finances were in a bad way. Every speech day, every big event, every big celebration of Fortescue was there. Six generations of them. The Fortescue family have been a member of, had a member, on the Board of Governors ever since the school began. Some years ago, I was talking to Lady Margaret Fortescue's daughter, Lady Aaron, who had taken over as governor from her mother when she retired. I asked whether Lady Aaron's own daughter would continue the family tradition. Oh yes, she said. She has been told 